Hi everybody, hope you've had a great week. It's Pastor Martin and we're gonna have a great Sunday today because we've got a guest speaker, a very a, a person that's close to us and that we've known, that I've known personally for more than 10 years, uh, Kristen Johnson, and she's uh, been with us in ministry. She's been such a blessing to the ministry and she's extremely uh, versatile when it comes to teaching and preaching. But one of her specialist subjects is healing. And today she's going to speak on healing and it's the sort she she speaks and preaches in a way that you can take this message and go over and over and over, meditate on the scriptures, get faith brought up in you and allow God to manifest healing through you. Do you know that's God's best way of healing? It's for you to listen to scriptures, for you to listen to the word, let faith emerge within you, and then get blessed and healed by your own faith with God. That is God's best way of healing you. So this is, going to be, uh, uh, this is going to be gold for you today. I'm not going to take too much longer. Kristen will come on in a second, and she's going to do this week and next week. Um, so that'll be great to have her for two Sundays in a row. But before she does, please like as much as you can. Please share and please subscribe. So God bless you, and I'll hand you over to Kristen right now. Thanks so much, Pastor Martin, for having me on your channel today. I'm so excited to be teaching on um, healing. I'm going to be doing a two-part series, um, but I just wanted to tell you why healing is so important. Um, I think it's just such a misconception, and um, it's a really controversial topic, especially when we look at today's world and what's happening. Um, there's so many people that are suffering that um, are in need of healing and that's why I became so passionate about it and I really just want you to come today with an open mind, um, ready to receive, ready to hear and just to learn from God um, and I pray that you will be just filled with His Spirit and you'll be able to receive and then go forward and minister healing to others. So even before we can start today to look into healing, we need to truly understand what are some of the fundamentals that you need for healing to be activated in your life. Um, and one of those things is faith. Um, similar to salvation, you need faith to activate healing. Um, and so I looked at what is faith? What does faith mean? And I just want to read it out. Um, faith is the complete trust or confidence in someone or something. And that's what the dictionary says. But that's great, but do we understand what the Bible says about faith? And so if you turn to Hebrews 11.1, 1, the Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And that's really important because when you think about it, faith is something that you need to long for. It's a longing. It's an it's a urge that you need um, to have something or to believe in something even before you see it. Um, and if you go a little bit further into Hebrews and look at verse 3, it says there, By faith we understand the world was framed and created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. And that's really important when you think about it. The whole earth that we live in, the whole world that we see, was framed by faith words spoken out by God. Even before he saw them, he said, let there be light, and there was light. So the things that we take for granted, those faith words were spoken out. Um, and so that's really, truly important for you to understand what faith is and why you need faith to activate healing. But that's all good and well. You may say, well, I've got faith. But how do you continue to build up that faith to receive the healing that you need? Um, and if we look at the Bible, it says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. So today, if you are trusting for healing, or you know, it could be if you're trusting for finances, you need to go out and study the word to ensure that you're building up your faith strong enough, that you're bold enough, you're encouraged to be able to receive and activate that healing or finances, for example. But particularly around healing is truly understanding and truly um, reading and listening to sermons and just developing yourself, meditating on the word, like Pastor Martin said earlier, to truly develop and activate it and make it real in your life. Um, Proverbs 4.20 says, My son, attend to my words, incline thy ear unto my sayings, 
Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. So two truly important words. They are life and they are health. And so if you find the words of God in this Bible, if you find these words and um, you hearken to them, they are life unto you. And that's so important. I think we take for granted the Bible that was given to us to really touch us and to really feed our souls. And I really want you to truly understand that what you hear today is building up your faith. What you hear today is life to your flesh. And what you hear today can be health to you and those around you. So I think that's just building the foundation of the things that we're gonna look into today. But I think it's really important that you truly understand what faith is, how you build up your faith, and what faith looks like and how you can develop it. And so we've looked at what faith is, but why do we need faith to receive healing? What does the Bible say about that? But before we even start to think about it, I think we need to truly reflect. I think we all need to be honest with ourselves and say, where's our faith at? Am I truly at a level where I can start to even pray and ask for something that I need to receive? And so uh, I'll give an example. If I'm trusting God, um, I'm paralyzed, for example, and I'm saying to the world and my brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm believing God for healing, but truly deep down, I don't see a way out. I'm saying the right words because they sound great, but actually my faith isn't strong enough or it's not in the right place to be able to receive the healing. God knows our hearts. He knows our deepest thoughts. So instead of saying words that are sound right or the Christian keywords that, you know, buzzwords that people want to use, let's just reflect and let's be honest and let's say to ourselves, my faith isn't where it's at. I need to spend time in the word. I need to get closer to God and I need to truly try and understand what I need to then be able to activate those promises that God has given me. Um, Belief comes first. If you have, if you see something, you didn't need to believe it to see it. And so belief comes first and then the seeing is the results of that believing. Um, And unfortunately, it sounds like a great phrase, but I didn't make it up. That comes from Keith Moore. And it's, um, I just thought it was really great that I wanted to share that with you because um, seeing is a result of believing. And so if you can start to believe today, that's when you're going to start to see those great results that God wants for you. Um, We need to stop begging God for our healing. God thought about healing far before you thought or even it came to the inclination that you needed healing. He came up with this plan. So he wants to heal you. But if we look at his word, what does his word say? And so in 1 Peter 2, 24, it says, by whose stripes we are healed. Um, In Isaiah 53, 5, it says, with his stripes, we are healed. These are all past tense. He's already done what he's going to do to provide healing for us. We just need to activate it. And when I was thinking about this, when I was preparing for this, um, this sort of teaching, I started to think, you know, as, as a child, if I wanted a car and I asked my dad, dad, I really need a car to get around, to get to places. And he says, Kristen, okay, fine. I'm going to buy you that car. So he buys me the car and I go back to him and say, dad, I really need to get around to places. And he says, Kristen, I've already given you the car. All you need is the key to ignite it, to, you know, um, put the key in the ignition, and then you'll be able to go where you need to be. And this is similar to God. He's saying, I've already given you the tools. I've already given you the words that are health and life to you. All you need to do is ignite it. And that's why it's so important today. We already have the tools. We don't need to beg God anymore. He's already done by dying on the cross and and saving us and and wiping away and by the stripes we are healed. So all we need to do is activate it. And that's why it's so important to truly understand the word. Um, This is all past tense. Um, God has done the work, but it's important to also um, understand the word and to rightly divide it. It says in 2 Timothy 2, that, um, you know, study to show yourselves 
approved and to rightly divide the word of truth. And so if you are reading the Bible, if you're meditating on it, you'll be able to understand it and apply it to your life. Um, faith is like muscles. Um, I like to go to the gym. I wouldn't say that I necessarily have a lot of muscles, but if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. And so every single day you need to be getting in your word. You need to meditate. You need to build it. It's like a baby. Every single day you need to feed the baby. And every single day you need to feed yourself with faith words, faith sermons, whatever it is, just to build yourself up. And so that's really important. But before we can start to say, okay, we understand what faith is. We understand how we build it up. We understand what... God has done for us to receive healing. Um, you really, I really want you guys to understand that sickness and diseases does not come from God. I think there's a total misconception that sickness comes from God and it's Him punishing us. That is absolutely not scriptural. And I want you today, so you can be able to take away the word that is being taught to truly understand that God wants you healed. It is absolutely His will to heal you, to save you, to free you. Um, if we look at the scripture in Acts 10.38, it said, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed from the devil. And two really key things here, well, three actually. He went around doing good, so we know that God's a good God. He went about healing all all, every single individual has access to be healed by God. Every single person, regardless of who you are, regardless of what you've done, God wants to heal you. Um, and thirdly, he went around healing all that were oppressed from the devil. They weren't oppressed from God, they were oppressed from the devil. And so it's really important to understand sickness does not come from God. Um, it also says in 1 Corinthians 15, 25 to 26, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And so we, we know that God is going to destroy the last enemy, which is death. And if God created sickness, he would be destroying himself. And that doesn't make sense. You know, we're all smart people. That does not make sense at all. So sickness comes from the devil. And lastly, in John 10.10, 10, it says, The thief cometh not, but to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I come that they may have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. And so that is just so exciting. We see the bad side that we know, that the devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy. But God has come to give you life. He's given you these words that can change your life around. So I really, truly want you just to Get a hold of this today and know that it's God's will for you to be healed. Sickness does not come from him. He's a good God and he loves you. So let's get into this a little bit more. Let's just start to take a hold of that faith. And as we go through some of the examples, because today um, we already know that faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word. And so my plan today is to really start to go through some detail with you about some of the examples of Jesus carrying out miracles in healing during his time on earth and what that looks like, how those individuals received their healing and how healing was ministered. So then you can start to apply that to your life. Um, so there are roughly around 20 explicit examples in the Bible. Um, and we are going to go through a handful, some of the main ones that are key that I wanted to bring out. But there are thousands of healings and miracles that took place. Um, these aren't just the ones that took place, but these are the explicit ones that the Bible details for us to reference to. Um, and so the first one, it seems pretty small. Um, when you compare some of the things that Jesus did, you know, when he was raising people up from the dead, and then you think about this one that I'm about to uh, detail, you think, okay, that's not a great thing, but there's some key items that we can take from it. And so it's Jesus turns water into wine. And that's the first miracle recorded. Um, and that's in John 2, 1 to 10. So if you can just turn to John with me, I'm going to read it out um, from the King James because um, 
I like to get um, the historic context. So from one to 10. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, they have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, woman, what have I do have to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, fill the water pots with water, and they fill them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. And that is such a really important um, text especially verse five, which I want to reference to when Mary says to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. And that's so important to apply when you are trusting God for your healing. Um, we need to seek God first. We don't need to go to our friends. We don't need to go to our pastors necessarily. We need to go to God. We need to pray and say, God, how do you want me to deal with this sickness? How do you want me to deal with this need? Show me, God. Because ultimately, you'll see through all the examples in the Bible, every single healing was received in a different way. And it's not a one format that fits all. So it's so important to seek God and then whatever he tells you to do, you do it. I also like the fact that the servants, they didn't question God. They didn't say, you said to do X, Y, and Z, but my life could be at risk here. What if? People think that we've served water. Doubt could have filled their head, but they didn't allow that to deter them from what they were told to do. They followed Mary's instructions, whatever he says, do it. And they did exactly that. And so they believed, just like we looked into earlier, they believed before they saw the result. And the result was even more tremendous than they thought because they ended up not just getting standard wine, but even better wine. And um, that may not be an example of healing, but that's a prime example of setting the foundation of when you're trusting God for a miracle or healing on what you need to take to be able to receive it. You need to trust him. And you need to listen to whatever he says for you to do. Um, and that is just so key. Very, very key. Um, the next example that I wanted to look at is, um, and it's really famous, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard about Jairus' daughter and the woman with the issue of blood. And the reason why I want to look at both of them together is because it's, it's a story being told on a journey. Um, and I'm going to summarize almost, and we're going to read it shortly. But um, Jairus, he probably heard of a man who was a miracle worker. He was out healing the mass. He was doing signs and wonders and his daughter falls sick. He hears, which is key, remember, because we talked about faith comes from hearing and hearing of the word of God. He heard of a man who is going around healing. He had a need for his daughter who was on her deathbed. And he said, I believe that this man can help my daughter. If he can just come and lay his hands on her, she will be made whole. And that his, his faith led him to go out and find Jesus um, to ask him to come back and heal his daughter. Um, and during those travels, we'll note that whilst Jesus had agreed to come back and see his daughter, the woman with the issue of blood came and wanted to receive her own healing. So let's look at that scripture. Um, it's recorded three times in the New Testament. In Matthew 9, 18 to 25, Mark 5, 22 to 43, and in Luke 8, 40 to 56. I'm going to read from Matthew today, um, but I will reference to some of the other texts. 
So Matthew 9, verse 18 to 25. So while he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman, which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort, thy faith had made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed him to scorn. But when people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. Um, so that is a really, really interesting um, story and something that Matthew felt he, he left out a little bit. And that's why it's recorded in Mark and Luke. But during that journey, while Jairus is, is going with God and the woman of the issue of blood is healed, um, a report comes from a family member or someone from the household to report to Jairus that his daughter is dead. Do not trouble the master. Um, she's no longer alive. And we're going to look into what Jesus says to him. He says, do not fear, just believe. And they continue to go on to his house. And then you see at the end of Matthew that his daughter is healed. So I just want to break this down a little bit. Um, we see in Matthew 9, um, if we look at the woman of the issue of blood first, um, she says, if I may but touch his garment, I, sh I shall be whole. In Mark 5, 28, it says, if I touch even his garments, I will be made whole. Those are those faith words that are being spoken out. She's speaking out what she believes is going to happen even before she sees those results. She said to herself, and I truly believe that this is the case, similar to Jairus, she would have heard of this miracle worker. She would have heard of this man carrying out all these signs and wonders. And she is keen to get healing for herself. We know, um, Luke records it, that um, the woman with the issue of blood, she waited 12 years um, before seeing any manifestation of healing. She spent all, not some, but all of her money on doctors, on physicians, trying to be healed and not seeing any results. And so for those of you out there who have been to the doctors and they said, there's nothing else I can do for you but God. There is a God who wants to heal you. There's a God who's a miracle worker. There's a God that says, I will heal you. There's a God that says by his stripes, you're already healed. And so don't be put off by you being told the report is bad. I'm sorry, you've got stage four cancer. There's nothing else we can do. God can do anything. He can do all things. And so trust in him similar to what um, the woman with the issue of blood trusted. Um, it doesn't mean if you tried all avenues that you give up on God because he hasn't given up on you. Um, he's Alpha, the Omega. He's our restorer. Um, I believe that the woman of the issue of blood, she had hope. You know, we heard about faith is um, the substance of things hoped for. She had hope after hearing. And um, she just said, if, if I can touch his garment, I shall be made whole. And um, some of the key words that Jesus said to the woman of the issue of blood after um, she touched his garment, she said, he said, your faith has made thee whole. And that's so important. It's not my, uh, my um, sister's faith. It's not my friend's faith. It's not my mother's faith praying for me. It was her faith that made her whole. And it's your faith that will make you whole. It's your faith in God's words, these promises that will make you whole, that will change your life. Um, so you need to truly build up your faith today to be able to receive what God wants to give you and what he's already given you. Um, and then if we go back and focus on Jairus, what did Jairus say? In Matthew 9, 18, he says, to Jesus, if you just come and lay thy hand upon her and she will live. And so 
you, when you think about that, that's faith words again. He's already said, if you come and lay thy hand upon her, she shall live. He spoke out those faith words. He knew that if, if Jesus could just come, the change would come. And in Mark 5, 23, it also says, it's recorded, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed and she shall live. So faith words being spoken out by yourself are truly important, but faith words that you believe, not just faith words to say faith words, but faith words that you believe without a shadow of a doubt. Um, and so can you believe this? Jairus has built up his faith. He's on the way back with Jesus. He's just seen the woman with the issue of blood be healed and her life changed after 12 years. Um, she, sat, she, she put herself at risk going into um, the public with, the, with her um, medical issue. She could have been stoned to death, but she took that risk. And I can imagine that Jairus' faith was built up even stronger. And just as he was about to go receive his healing for his daughter, he gets a bad report. He gets a bad news from someone who's come to say, his daughter's dead. And this is what's so important here that I took, that even before Jairus gets an opportunity to start to dwell um, on, on the report that was just given to him, Jesus shows his compassion. He intervenes straight away. He stops the hopelessness thoughts, the doubt, the fear from overtaking Jairus. And he says, what does he say? He says, do not fear, only believe. And in Luke 8, 50, it says, fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. At that point, he, he didn't have a long time to think about it. He either, he had two choices, to continue to allow the fear and doubt and worry and concern to take over, or to do just exactly what Jesus said and to believe, continue to believe and to hold on to that faith for his daughter to be made whole. And we see at the end that he, he did believe, he continued to trust and hope. Just when you think you're at the end and you're almost receiving it, do not give up. Because sometimes guys, you're so close to receiving that healing from God, but you've given up the last minute. It doesn't mean that you can't start to build up your faith again, but just persevere. Do not give up because God's words and his promises are true. They're life to you. And they will change any circumstance, regardless of the time frame of how long you've waited. Um, and so we know that Jairus' daughter was made whole. She was healed. Um, and those, those two stories that I've um, told you about today just are so encouraging. They just really impact me, really just make me feel so grateful for God, but also gives me the tools and shows and demonstrates to me what I need to do to be able to receive healing and which you'll be able to do for yourself. Um, I'm conscious that we don't have a lot of time, but I just want us to look at one more um, example of healing in the Bible. And it's just around the paralytic man. Um, and this also is recorded three times in the New Testament. Um, but I'm going to look at Luke 5, 17 to 25. And I'm just going to read this quickly to you. Just... It says here from verse 17, And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, men brought in a bed, a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling and his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? Whether it's easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk, but that they may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins. I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy couch, and go into thine house. 
And immediately he rose up before them and took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. This is such a really important um, account of healing. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, firstly, let's just take, let's consider who was in the room. There were Pharisees in the room. There were doctors of the law. They were preparing to judge Jesus. They were not there to receive healing at all. Um, they were expecting, though, for him to perform miracles. So I think this is quite interesting because these guys believed that Jesus was capable of, of carrying out miracles, but they weren't there to receive anything, just to condemn him. So it's important. They believed and they were there ready. Um, but also it says in verse, where did I read this? In verse 17, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. So we know that the power of the Lord can be present, but not necessarily anyone is there to receive the healing. No one received any healing at that point, but it specifically says that the power of the Lord was present to heal. And then we see in this case that the paralyzed man and his friends, they wanted to get into where they knew that preaching and teaching of healing was taking place. So we know that hearing, they were building up their faith. Individuals were in the room building, having their faith built up. The, the person in need of healing or who had strong faith wanted to get in where there were multitudes, but there was no way. And you know what, guys? I really would love to have friends like the paralytic man. I mean, who, what type of friends is going to put you on a roof? First of all, you're paralyzed. They're going to carry you onto a roof. They're going to take the tiles apart and then they're going to lower you down. One, that's true friends that I would like in my life. And two, that just shows how far they were willing to go to receive what they knew without a shadow of doubt that God was going to give to them. And so the paralyzed man and his friends, they um, did not let any obstacles defeat them. And what does Jesus say? He says, let me just go back to it. He says, and when he saw their faith and this is key he saw their faith it was demonstrated you could see through their actions that they believed he said unto him man thy sins are forgiven thee and i thought this was really interesting because when you start to look at um, examples of healing in the bible you don't see many where he says man thy sins are forgiven thee and so i started to think why did he say that like why in this instance and remember i said every type of healing or scenario is completely different and God will deal with it in a completely different way. And so I, I started to think about it. And in the Old Testament, um, people used to believe that um, they were either born with a defect or disease because of their parents' sins or, or maybe a sin that they've committed. And so Jesus says unto him, man, thy, um, thy sins are forgiven. And if we look at, we need to turn to 1 John 3, 20 to 22 to understand why he would say that. I'm just going to read that quickly. And he says, it says in um, 1 John 3, 20 to 22, that for if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence towards God and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So like I said before, in the Old Testament, people believed that maybe it was their parents' sins or sins they committed why they were in the situation they were in. And so Jesus wanted to get the man to, in, in a place, the paralytic man in a place where he would be able to easily receive from God. And that's why he said, man, thy sins are forgiven. And that would then allow him to, he already demonstrated the faith, but to be able to receive from God and feel that he was worthy to receive. And so then what does Jesus go on to say afterwards? If we just quickly go back to Luke, he says, Verse 24, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy couch and go into thine house. And that paralytic man received his healing. He demonstrated faith similar to everyone else. He received his healing and um, he didn't doubt or let any obstacles get in his way. And so I just want to quickly summarize to you today that faith 
is the substance of things hoped for. We've seen so many examples of people hoping for things that they didn't have, but they really needed and wanted, and then seeing those results. We know that faith comes from hearing and hearing of the word. So it's really important to get this word embedded in your heart and soul. We know that, um, that you need to make this um, an importance in your life. It's not something that you can do once in a while, but something that you need to feed to yourself daily. And so I want to encourage you as, as we wait until next week to go through some of the other examples and to just really um, meditate on the word. Let this be life and health to your body. Um, I just thank you again, um, Pastor Martin, for allowing me to come on and teach today. Um, I really hope and pray that this is ministered to your hearts and your souls and that you'll be able to apply it in your everyday life. Um, make sure that you like and subscribe to Pastor Martin Phelps Ministries. Um, if you haven't already, um, leave a comment, any questions that you need to ask. Um, thanks again. We love you so much. Have a great Sunday.